The opinions expressed in this video reflect the opinions of the participants only and do not reflect the opinions of the producer or Boston University School of Law. Boston University School of Law and or Boston University in no way endorse this video. Located in the tallest law school building in the United States, Boston University School of Law sits high above the Charles River, adjacent to the rest of Boston University. The Law Tower is located about two-thirds of a mile from the legendary Fenway Park and three miles from the Boston Common. The green line of the Boston Metro, the T, runs down Commonwealth Avenue right through BU, easily connecting with regional trains through the nearby Back Bay stop. MIT and Harvard lie just across the river in Cambridge. BU Law was founded in 1872 and has continued its tradition of fine legal education to the present day. The U.S. News & World Report recently ranked BU as tied as the 20th top law school in the country. With approximately 800 full-time JD students, BU Law is a mid-sized law school. Despite its size, BU offers nearly 150 classes and seminars, one of the largest selections in the country. Additionally, several joint degree programs are available. The school also has six journals that are staffed by over a third of the student body. The school has also been singled out by two separate publications as having an outstanding teaching faculty. Let's meet some students. I'm Matt McCloskey. I'm the, uh, actually the president of the Student Bar Association here. Uh, undergrad, I went to Syracuse University. Um, took a year, went off, bummed around Colorado. Back here in my last year of law school. And not really ready to go out in the real world. Okay, my name is Amy Weston. I'm in my second year at Boston University School of Law. I did my undergrad at Kalamazoo College in Michigan in 1998. I went to Boston University undergrad and I'm a second year student here at BUSL. Are you a Red Sox fan? Absolutely. Why did you choose BU Law? I chose BU because I wanted to be back in Boston and um, of the schools here it was the best school I got into. And after the, after the fact, I found out all the reasons I should have gone here, but that was what it, that was what it boiled down to. It's one of the top-ranked schools, uh, and it offered me a scholarship. <laughs> I choose BU, chose BU again because I actually spent a year away in New Zealand and got very homesick and <laughs> decided that this is really where I wanted to be, where I wanted to live, and the law community here is very tight. Was BU your first choice? I'm probably the wrong person to ask, but I, I really love it here. I mean, that's. And that's why I do everything I do, and the stuff the stuff we do here is great. It's a, it's a great mix of uh, again, the, you know, the teaching faculty and a lot of extracurricular stuff. There's a, there's a very good um, sort of spirit to the school that a lot of schools don't have. We're, we're much less competitive than a lot of schools are amongst each other. So I like it a lot here. Was New England as a region an important factor in making your decision? Region was somewhat important to me. It was more important that I go to a city that seemed interesting and vibrant and that had a good legal market. Uh, and my boyfriend's family is from this area. What do you like about Boston? I like that it's on the ocean. Uh, and I like that it's old. I like that there's a lot of history here. And I like that it's close enough to places like New York um, and Washington, D.C. so that it's reachable, but it's still got sort of a small town feel. Do you find Boston to be expensive? You can't make a decision based on cost in most situations. It's um, particularly in law school, the result of being at a better school will generally pay off far more than the, the cost difference between a couple schools. Cost uh, was a consideration in coming here in that I got a scholarship, but um, the amount of the scholarship is probably offset by the cost of living, which is very expensive. Rents are extremely high here. From where I'm from, which is Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, um, and there I was paying half the rent that I was paying here before I came, so it was more expensive than I anticipated. Have you had much time to explore New England? I could list to you the, 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 the places that I've been able to go to in New England since I've been here, but they're pathetically small. Um, for example, Crane Beach I've been to, I've been up to Ipswich, but no, not anywhere near, I haven't been able to do anywhere near what is available here to do. I'm an avid skier, and I haven't been to any mountains. Um, I haven't been out on the water, really. It's just really stressful. <laughs> What would you be doing if you weren't here? Computer programming is what I'd probably be doing if I weren't here, actually. Uh, that was actually my, my original degree was in computer science. And uh, I was in it, didn't like it, and decided to go to law school. If I weren't in this program studying law right now, I would probably be living in Germany, in Berlin. I left Germany to come back to North America, um, and I had a job offer there that I decided to 
turn down in order to come back to school. If I wasn't going to law school, I would definitely be getting my PhD in philosophy. I'm still thinking of doing that, actually. I'm getting a JDMA right now. I'm getting my master's in philosophy. And I'm pretty sure if I don't find the right job afterwards, I'm going to get the PhD. Are joint degree students common here? It depends on the program. The business program's huge. The joint MBA program. The philosophy, there's about five of us. And not all of us will make it, from what I hear. Because it's a lot of extra work. <laughs> Same amount. You can do it in three years. What do you want to do with your degree? Ideally, I would like to be probably at first working with public interest, uh, doing something to help the community around here, and then later on I'd love to teach in this area. With my degree, I, I, mean, I hope to move on to do uh, initially something, hopefully at least somewhat lucrative. I, I'll come out of here with a significant amount of debt. But um, after that, I mean, I, part of the reason I chose a law degree was that I, I'm unsure in a lot of ways. And, a law degree is something that's very flexible. You can, you can move on and you can go and you can do all, all sorts of things. And I figured with a, you know, an engineering degree and a, computer, and a computer science degree and a law school degree, law degree I'd, I could pretty much go wherever I want and be qualified. College or law, depending on how much experience I get, whether or not I can do law or not. What's your thesis about? Because of my JDMA in philosophy, I have to do my upper class writing requirement in conjunction with my master's thesis. So probably I'll write on uh, ethics and moral theory. Are ethics a focus at BU? Definitely. We're required to take a professional responsibility class. It's one of the only requirements we have as upperclassmen. So they're very serious about us learning to be proper lawyers. This is our third week of class, and I'm in my second year, so it's my third week of corporations. Um, but a lot of um, a lot of what we've done so far in class is dealing with corporate responsibility, which is surprising seeing that it's so early on in the semester. So I foresee a lot of that, yeah. How have you found your fellow students? Again, I'm from, I'm from the West Coast where everything's a little bit more relaxed and the concept of you know, old money and new money and family names isn't as ingrained there as it seems to be here. So it was hard for me to, 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 to be part of this culture where people have a lot of money and um, their families have a lot of money. Um, but they're nice people, so it's okay. What do you like or dislike about BU Law? The law tower is really ugly. We have fantastic professors. Uh, they have clerked for Supreme Court justices. They're really, really uh, masters in their field. And probably the only thing I could possibly dislike is the condition of our building. Um, we're getting a new one though, so it's a good thing. But right now, it's not as nice as, say, Suffolk or Harvard's facilities. Is there a new building planned? Apparently, um, they were supposed to break ground, I think, this year, but some budget things got tied up. Uh, it's going to be down by the Student Village and the new Fit Rec Center. Otherwise, how are the facilities? The, the, the greatest thing about Boston University right now is the, um, the recreation center that just got opened in the spring. And it's, it's great. It's got a 35-foot climbing wall, so I've taken up climbing and I'm going climbing in about an hour now. Um, it's also got three levels of weights and just it's got squash courts, basketball courts, swimming pool. It's really good. It is a huge school and definitely I, I know for a fact their computing facilities are fantastic. I work upstairs in the computer office. We service everyone's laptops, your own laptops that you bring. Uh, we sell wireless, wireless printing. You can print and use the internet from anywhere in the building, even from out here. And that's definitely really great. Uh, the classrooms, they're doing all new acoustics for them. So it's better to have discussions and be able to hear each other. They just remodeled the bathrooms, remodeled the lounges. How would you describe Boston nightlife? The nightlife is fantastic. <laughs> um, I love Boston. I never want to leave. And uh, it's really great. I mean, because I'm from here, I've gone out a lot in the area. And I think it's great. It's a great city because it's small enough to get around, but big enough that you're meeting new people and seeing new things every time you go out. Pretty good. I mean, I'll be all kinds of people from New York various cities complain about the, you know, the fact that bars close at two. But there's, there's a good amount of stuff going on. And in, among, in, in the school, there's always stuff going on. So, I mean, among people from school, in addition to stuff at school. Do you need a car to go to school here? No, absolutely not. Uh, no. In fact, I, I, would, I would advise against having a car here. The parking is very expensive, and it's difficult to find spaces. Um, and there seems to be accidents all the time. There was just one today up at the corner. It was brutal. So. I have a bike. No, definitely not. I've never owned a car. I never want to own a car. You really don't need it. The buses and the T's are fantastic. You can walk from one end of the city to the other in an hour. 
and cabs are expensive, but you know, they're not, they're not that bad. What are your favorite parts of Boston? My favorite parts would probably be the North End, uh, just going there a lot as a child. I like it down there. Uh, I also like the Back Bay area, or Commonwealth and Beacon. That's ideally where I want to live when I'm more established. <laughs> How bad are the winters? Brutal, brutally cold. I'm from Vancouver, BC, and everyone thinks that it's really, really cold there, but it's not compared to this. Um, it's where we're standing right now, it's like an, a wind tunnel. Uh, and in the winter, the wind comes off the Charles and it sort of shoots through here so that you have to, you're all huddled with your big books and you have to fight your way through the wind and then the snow gets piled high in these drifts that you have to trudge through. It's, it's really awful. And it lasts a long time. What would you only know about BU Law by attending? The first thing about the law school that I wouldn't have known is the faculty. They're really good. They probably wouldn't know that a lot of the reputations we have aren't true. We're not competitive. Uh, there really isn't a lot of stuck-up, snobby, law school-type kids. There's a lot of very normal kids who are just here for the education and not here to make mega billions of dollars. Do graduates tend to get the kind of jobs they want? I don't know about getting the jobs ideally they want, but I know we have a huge job success rate. Uh, almost everyone who comes out of here passes the bar and gets a job. I think there's probably like 2% of people who don't. And our career development office helps you even after you've graduated, years after you've graduated, you can come back five years later and ask for help and they're willing to help you. Why law? What do you plan to do with your career? Well, I originally wanted to be a lawyer uh, so that I could do more for, for the world, for the, for the public interest. Um, now I want to be a lawyer because I need to make money to pay off my loans. I came in looking to do uh, intellectual property. Uh, remains to be seen. So. Uh, I've, I've done, a, done mostly criminal law while I've been here, so I like that a lot. First I'd like to make some money at a large corporate firm, if one will take me, and after a few years, I think about five, I'd probably like to leave that, maybe start a family, and then go back to the public interest or government sector. Work. I think that the law is something very important that everyone should understand and know, not just the black letter law, but where it comes from and why, and the philosophical policies behind it, because I think it just helps you be a more well-rounded, educated person and really be able to understand the issues and why one side goes one way and another goes another way and be able to make a choice. How philosophical versus practical is the curriculum? In law school, in, in large part, is more, far more philosophical about the law than you'll ever be during your career. So, I mean, you spend a, a lot more time talking about sort of, you know, the impact and how, how it was developed. And um, so, yes, I have one. And, and so short and side sentences, I probably can't put it in. Is there an area of law that you're focusing on? Right now, I'm trying to focus on corporate law um, and as much of international law as I can fit in with corporate law. Um, but it's open to change. Uh, I'm taking tax right now, and I think that's interesting, so maybe I'll go into tax. But. There is a lot of choice in, in where to go and I think it will really depend on where I get job offers and what interests me when I actually start practicing. Because at this point I don't know really what's going to be fun for me. So. Aren't there too many lawyers already? It depends where you go and what you're, what you're asking. I mean, the, uh, in certain fields, yes. And, and, uh, and overall, the, the thing is if you classify it as lawyers, it's not necessary. If you classify as people with law degrees, definitely not. I mean. I really feel my aunt going into law school's his advice was, you know, I feel like everybody should spend one year in law school. I mean, the stuff you learn just about sort of the rules of society is, is, is great. Um, whether so, there's definitely not too many people who go to law school, but there, there may, in certain fields, be too many lawyers. Can you describe the faculty? The teaching faculty here has been consistently rated. Um, it, it, I'm not sure the exact statistics, but it was something like the number one teaching faculty in the country for about four or five years before they stopped doing the ratings. Um, I mean, again, I, I, can, I can go read the book from any professor I want, um, but, it, but I, you know, I can't pick the professor I want to stand in front of my class. So I want to go, so any school you can go to that's got the best teaching teachers is really what it's about. The faculty at Boston University School of Law is excellent. It's one of the great polls. Um, we have faculty members that have won numerous awards. I, I couldn't tell you the names of the awards they have won off the top of my head, but um, they're excellent. My personal experience, I was really impressed with the faculty. They use the Socratic method, which most law 
school professors use, but they really use it. It's not a joke. Um, there's one professor, I didn't have him, but he's quite, he's notorious. Um, he sings to his class almost once each class based on the cases that they've been reading. So he'll, he'll take like, the famous one is he, Beastie Boys, Hello Nasty. He played, like changed all the words to it and performs it in front of his class and brings little props in. It's really funny. Do you have any Socratic horror stories? I was first called on in my second week of law school um, last year, and luckily it was a class that, for some reason, the professor wasn't intimidating and the subject matter was pretty, pretty basic, so I wasn't scared. Um, the second time I was called on in a different class, my voice cracked. Um, I don't think I got the answers. I don't really remember it. I sort of blanked it out. And from that moment on, I was going to class trembling for most of the year. You know, it's, it's silly because it doesn't affect your grade and nobody thinks bad of you or better of you based on how you perform in class, but it's still a matter of pride. Does getting called in in class inspire me to study? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it works. What do you wish you knew before attending? <laughs> the amount of work. You know, I came out of law school and everyone came out of college and everyone tells you how much work it's gonna be and it was a lot. How heavy is the workload? It's definitely the greatest amount of your first year. I mean, it's, I personally spent, you know, you spend two or three hours for every hour you're in class. So, you know, generally it was five or six hours a night for first year or during the day. Um, certainly there were days when it was less, but uh, it's a lot of work. Is legal writing a focus? Yes, and it is, it is everywhere. I mean, there's a, every, um, most schools have some sort of uh, legal writing requirement. For us, it's a, it's a certification paper. Um, which is a, about a 30-page paper that has to be supervised by a professor that's, you know, on a, ideally on sort of a little more cutting-edge topic where you're really sort of pushing something forward. Is international law a focus? At Boston University there is, yes, um, the international law process course, which is offered right now, um, covers foreign law. There is a European Union law course that's offered. Um, not that we consider that precedent, in the course, but we learn about it. And there is international trade law. And corporations also significantly covers international. There is also admiralty law, which is offered here. It's one of the few uh, law schools in the entire country that offers it. Is that maritime? maritime law, yeah. Can you discuss the LLM program? It's a school of almost a thousand people, so there, there, are, there are a whole host of different programs. Um, in fact, every year we bring in almost 150 uh, foreign students. Um, there's a whole American law program where they come in and study American law for a year before going back to their own countries, um, which is great. And actually, we're trying to do a lot with getting them involved with stuff. But it's so it, there. There is a lot of foreign foreign influence in, in some sense. Uh, there is an international student body. The the most significant uh, program would be the LLM program in American Studies. That's 100% international students. I think they have around 30 students that come in each year. They are all practicing lawyers already in their respective countries, so they bring in a pretty interesting and diverse mix to, um, to the student body, but the truth is the, un the, the JD students don't really mix with them that much. Are study abroad programs available? There are programs in a number of different countries. Um, I personally couldn't pull it off, but I would love to have. We have, um, we have a foreign studies program. It's got, pro it's got I guess sister schools in, the only ones I really know about are in Europe, because that's, those are the only ones that I've thought about. Um, in Amsterdam, Leiden, um, they have one in Hamburg now, one in London. Is there anything you'd want to change about the academics? Before I'd come, I wish I'd known more about um, the faculty. I would wish I'd um, known more about the stuff. I mean, I, there was nothing that I would have changed based on knowledge I have now. I mean, it's more just I, I lucked out. Not yet. I honestly really like it. I don't really have any problems with the education program. Do you plan on staying in Boston after graduation? Uh, generally in law school, you, you generally tend to stay in some of, some of the vicinity of where you start. We went to law school in part because you take the bar in the state you're in, um, so the schools will often be targeted towards the bar in that state. And once you've taken the bar in one state, it's really kind of a pain in the neck to take another bar unless, unless you're years down and they'll give you some sort of waiver. But so you generally want to stay near the area. And depending on, there are certain schools that have better reputations in certain areas. Um, and generally, any school you're in is going to be better known nearby. What kind of person might not be happy here? Honestly, I mean, no one particularly wants this, you know, to sit next to the student who's cutthroat and miserable there. and doesn't want to do it. I mean, we, you, want, you want people who are excited to be here. I mean, you want people who are 
happy to hear, willing, willing to you know, put forth all they've got and hopefully give something back to the school. That very competitive person everyone's afraid of seeing in law school, they shouldn't come here. They're, they're going to get ignored here. This isn't the competitive style. They're not going to have fun. What advice do you have for prospective law students looking at law schools in general and BU in particular? If they're absolutely certain that they want to go to law school, then I would say be prepared to work very hard. Um, be prepared for a lot of competition. It's a very competitive school. Um, but it's a good choice. I would recommend it. I'm happy here. It's just like applying for anything. You have to be really persistent, follow up on your applications, make sure they're complete, talk to people. I mean, I think one of the reasons why I got here is because I talked to the director of admissions, told her my goals and what I wanted to do and why this was the best place for me because of the dual degree program. And that really makes a difference. They want to fulfill your dreams, you know? Go in, visit, talk to some people. I mean, you can just just walking around the school, you can get such an, an idea of whether people are happy there and what is the kind of place you want to be. If you're a prospective student and you've been offered, if you've been accepted, uh, and you haven't been awarded a scholarship, I recommend talking to the financial aid office um, here to send them an email or give them a call or stop into the office when you arrive on campus because they have a lot of financial aid that's available to students. Um, and I've heard stories where students have just gone up there and asked and they've received money. So, it's good to know about. Do you think that most people are happy here? They, they present that face. Um, I, think, I think that there are many people who are miserable for, for the first year. Um, the, in, in law school, the pressures among your, in your first year are all in your first year because that, after your first year is really when you start applying for jobs based on those grades. So, there are a lot of people who are miserable during the first year, but after that it calms down and people have a good time.